Hi, I'm Kristen from icstarsquilting.com and today we are going to talk about something that does not get talked about that much, the back of your quilt. So you spend all of this time working on the front side of your quilt, but uh, when you get to the back, you're in like one of two moods. Either, oh my God, are we done with this quilt yet? And you don't wanna put any more time into it? Or I don't know what to do on the back. You know, we have all of these patterns for the front, but they just say, this is how much fabric you'll need for the back. I want to talk about how to make the back of your quilt interesting. Okay, you have the perfect opportunity for a 360 piece of art. The front, the back, the binding, so many different decisions go into making your quilt. And if you just slap some fabric on the back, because I don't know, you have like 500 yards of it because you got it on a super good sale, then it's a missed opportunity. You have the ability to create something fantastic on the back and it does not have to take a ton of extra effort. You don't have to make it complicated on the back. It can be very simple. Let's talk some of my favorite ways to make the back of your quilt fun and interesting. I just recently completed a quilt top. Here is the front of the quilt. As you can see, it's really complex. There's a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of fabric, a lot of seams. This pattern is actually by Violet Craft. It's a paper piecing pattern, and I really, really love the way that it turned out. I want to make the back of the quilt just as great as the front of the quilt. So one of my favorite things to do is one that I have right here, but it's still going to add lots of charm, lots of design elements to it. This right here, you'll see, it's just a simple jelly roll, okay? It is very simple, but what I have done with it is I have taken my scraps from the front of the quilt and I have incorporated them into the back of the quilt. You can see the light pinks, the dark pinks, the even darker pinks, the medium grays, you know, it's all in here. Plus, I added some extra fabric in here because the receiver of this quilt actually really, really loves music. She wants that incorporated in her quilt. So I added some choice fabrics in here. Now you'll notice some of these are really short pieces. Some of them are a little bit longer. Some of them are really long. Like this one right here, this uh, piano one right here is probably the full 42 inches. But I like to chop up my jelly roll quilts to make them a little bit more interesting. When you put this up, it's not gonna look very methodic and very like um, planned out, okay? It's gonna be a little bit random. It's gonna be really interesting on the back of your quilt. So when you are buying your fabric, buy a little bit extra, okay? That is going to be the easiest way to match the two sides, you know? Bring some of that fabric from the front side over to the back side. Buy like, I don't know, just an extra quarter of a yard, you know? If you have the money for it and you have the idea in your head, get used to buying just a little bit extra fabric. It saves you if you, whoopsies, cut something incorrect or sew something incorrect or one of your blocks just isn't working. It also makes for really good scrappy quilts later on. The second tip that I have for making the back of your quilt interesting is to have fun with it. You know, if the front of your quilt is really, really detailed, you spend a lot of time on it, right? So make the back of your quilt reflect that. If you did a really, really cool block on the front of your quilt and you want to mirror that on the back, sew one extra block or one extra piece thing and then do some treatment of fabric around it. You know, if you just want to like have fun with it and do something crazy, I don't know, blocks of like nine patches or something across the back of your quilt. Something to break up the monotony of just one straight piece of fabric. The third tip that I have for making the back of your quilt interesting is to always, always, always put a quilt label on. This is not so much making the back of your quilt interesting as it is making it your own. You want to sign your work because after years and years of quilting, you're never gonna remember exactly what you've made. You're never going to remember when exactly you made it. And if you go ahead and start taking care of that now, you're going to really, really appreciate it later on. So please make sure that you add a label on there. Just to give you a couple more ideas, I'm gonna show you some other examples of quilt backs that I have done where I have tried to not necessarily do anything complicated, anything hard, but just keep it interesting and switch it up a little bit on the backs of the quilts. Most of them have been creative ways of using these scraps that I have 
Um, a lot of my quilts don't tend to be, you know, 42 inches wide. They're bigger, right? So you either have to like weirdly <laughs> Frankenstein piece some fabric together or get some creative ways of like, I don't know, cutting it up and doing like stripes across the back or, you know, something like that to make it different, make it fit, make it not look like it was just pieced together accidentally. I have a blog post on my site that actually has four things that you need to include when you gift a quilt, as well as some links to some free gift tags and things that you can add on there. Go to the search bar and search four things to include when you gift a quilt, and it'll take you right to that link. You'll be able to get the free downloads. Make sure you have everything in there that you need to do to be gifting your quilt the best way that you possibly can. I hope that you enjoyed this video on how to make the back of your quilt look interesting. If you have any questions or any comments or anything, please be sure to put them down below. I do answer all of the questions and all of the comments that I get on my YouTube channel. Do me a favor, if you really, really like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Also, hit the subscribe button. You won't want to miss any new content as it comes across. I've been putting up videos every single week. I really appreciate you watching and I appreciate you listening. Please shoot me an email if you have any quirking questions. I love to hear from you. I hope you have a good afternoon and I will talk to you soon. Bye.